Oh, what in the, what in the heck? I wish you were here. Good morning, everybody. We're going to keep it real chill today. Oh, yeah. Might have some audio funkiness going on today. I don't know. Hope, hope, hope. Because, because, yeah, things got plugged in, things got unplugged in, things got replugged in. So, hey, everybody. We're going to be uh, doing a pretty cool project today. Shabba de be wa Shabba de wa do dee be dee dee Just letting some folks file in here before we get started. 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 Feeling good after a nice night of drinking. Way too strong a beer. Beer that strong, knock you out, fool. Knock you out. hear me like you normally can hear me everything should be fine okay okay yeah I'm I don't know if I don't know I don't really get hung over that much <laughs> it's all good in the neighborhood baby oh yeah oh it's all good in the neighborhood baby okay so today we are going to be doing a Knoll sort of scavenger type character. So this is another hero commission. And this one has a really interesting description to it. So I'm kind of excited. And we, we're in a dark sun-like world with this character. So we're going to, I think I'm thinking like some rust type colors. So we're going to start with this kind of baby poop brown here. Just your, just your basic baby poop brown. And we're just going to start working. You know how we do it. You just get a color, start blending it, start playing. Just let stuff happen. So maybe we're in like a, a dune like space here. And I'm not talking Quasod's Hatteract. I'm talking like actual dunes. Now, you guys know, always at the beginning of these projects, I have this sort of slow, laggy stage. I need to free up memory. Like, oh my gosh, so many high res files have been opened today. I'm in, I'm in crazy land. So let's see. Can we free up uh, a couple gigs? There we go. Two gigs free. Okay, so let's get some let's get some work done here. Okay, now let's get some tonal variation. And you know, one way that I always do the tonal variation is just throw a little bit of a a monkey wrench of color on things like yeah except I kinda want something like this like a sun the feeling of a of a intense sun so I'm gonna do that and then since I don't really dig gradients in things so that just gave me some colors so what I'm gonna do then is get this circle here and then I'm gonna grab this center color and then just fill that circle so you see that just that just changed my sun from like, you know, being built on a gradient to being just nice and clean edged. And then I'm just going to paint, find these colors and these yellows. And you can see like the color variation on my brush is, is a little oversensitive when I'm using it with yellows. So you get some of these sort of little variation ridges, which can be sort of dumb. So we'll get, we'll get back to all that in just a second. We're gonna, we'll remedy all these things. Everything's going to be great. Okay, so now I want a little more of a rust tone in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this, this darker brown. And you see I'm just in my color wheel. And I'm just going to pull a little bit toward red. And then paint in a little bit. 
take that mixture and go back and just do the same thing again. See that? And there's my color. So that way your colors are friends. They come from the same family. And this is, this is for me at least, over the years, has been one of the hardest things to get a handle on. And props out to my man E. Speakman for his guidance in that area. He's a, a much more a master of color than I could ever be. But just by hanging around him, you know, through osmosis, you can learn, you can learn some tricks. Okay, so there's my there's my dark sun world right there. So now I usually go down to a smaller brush, and I just start sort of playing around with some sort of straight lines. I put little bits here and there. Why do I do it? I don't know. It just sort of feels like it's a piece, like it's a piece of art. <laughs> so you know, just kicking it, taking it nice and easy today. That's what we're gonna do, guys. We're just gonna keep it nice and chill. And uh, for those of you who missed out on last night's drinking fest, sorry about that. But I do have a rule that uh, no archiving drinking streams. And so that stream has disappeared into the ether of the internet. So sorry about that. Um, and if you're, uh, you know, European and the, the drinking streams are hard for you to catch, I'm sorry about that. So uh, I'm not sure what solution to offer there. I'm not going to be drinking in the morning or anything. Um, well, at least not on the internet. Okay. Just having some nice coffee today. Just a little cream and sugar. A little oatmeal to get things started. Fill that stomach. Hey, Rory. Thanks, you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's just great. That's very generous of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, here we are. We got our sort of, you know... What was that? Was that even 10 minutes? It's like seven minutes to a sort of a dark sun backdrop. And there's my dark sun backdrop right there. You know, the, the, the color palette of Athos is this kind of ochre and rust colors. Now I still have some of these ridges here that I find annoying. And so what I do is I just take a color and I sort of paint a half opacity, real light hand, and just sort of rub. And, and it can alleviate some of this striation that these brush dynamics create. See that? It just kind of mellows them out. Okay. And remember, you know, a lot of times I do paint zoomed out like this. And it may seem like, well, how are you going to see all the details and stuff? I think it's really smart to paint zoomed out like Sparth says. Because it is how you're going to experience the piece. You're not going to be looking at the piece like this. Like, that's not realistic. You're going to be looking at as it as a whole piece, which is out here. So that's why I paint from what may seem like a, a little bit far away sometimes. Okay. So here we are. Almost at 100%. I'm going to go to another layer here. And I think I'm going to do a quick save there. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is a knoll scavenger in a dark sun world named Grip. And it's got sort of some interesting parts and pieces to them that I uh, definitely don't have very often in my work. The first one is this sort of dark sun theme, right, which is really cool, so we're going to play with that. But then secondly, um, he's got a bassinet helmet, which is going to be interesting, and his gear is all really beat up, and he's got this almost like Mad Max kind of feel. So First of all, I want to get my base color, right? Which is going to be something like that. I think a little less color and a little more dark. There's going to be my base color. So you see, it's near black, but it isn't black. Um, only your backdrop is really true, true black because it's just a little harsh. Even that one might be just a little harsh. And remember, even your darkest color needs to live in this family, even though it's close to black. So I'm going to put that there. Now that I'm in here, I'm going to, I'm going to alleviate a little bit of this yellow striation. I'm going to play and put some, some bits. I'm going to rub a little bit. I'm just going to play around for a second. It just distracted me for a second there when I was working. Okay, cool. So now back to our base color. Now, I want to start sort of up here. You know, I always start with my, my heroes to try to get that face to really pop. In this case, this character poses a bit of an interesting dilemma because it's a knoll for starters, right? It's sort of like a hyena wolf biped. 
but also wears this bassinet helmet, which is like a jousting helmet. So I don't really want to portray the knoll wearing the helmet because you're not going to see that it's a knoll, right? You're just going to see a guy in a helmet because he's like in disguise, right? That's no fun. So what I want to do is get the, the knoll part figured out first. And then I think I'm going to put the, the helmet in his, like under his arm. So there's a lot of decisions to make here that are a little bit like implicit as I begin, meaning I'm going to set a lot of, of tone for a lot of other things by choosing my fur color and just exactly like what all the parts and pieces of this character are. Um, I'm going to have him looking right at the camera. I don't know why. For some reason that just feels right. And then we're going to twist the neck a little bit just like this. So like our center line kind of goes over there. You see that? Um, and then I'm going to do a, a low slung collar so you can see some of these nice neck muscles in here and we're going to start building. And I also want to give him these, these almost like Hellboy like shoulders where the shoulders are real slumpy like this. Really love how Mignola does those, those real slumpy shoulders on his characters. They're really, really different and creative. So there we go. Beefy Pikachu, beef at you. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I actually think Pikachu is not a bad reference for what we're dealing with here. This a head structure somewhat like Pikachu. Okay, here we go. I'm not gonna have quite enough room, so I'm gonna have to sort of scale them down a bit. But you see, I'm just trying to let my hand relax here and just and just guide me a little bit. So here's this sort of one leg. He's going to have those, you know, that strange, uh, the hock joint articulation in the legs. So we're going to have to do that. So let's just bring him down so we can fit everything in. And here's where he goes back, back to the hock joint. There's the hock joint right there, and then down, and then like that, right? And this is like a dog sort of standing on two legs. So it's a little bit awkward feeling. Um, sometimes can feel sort of demonic in a way, like pumpkin head or something. But I think I'm going to bring this front thigh. It just looks too twisted on me. Like, you know, his, his thigh is almost like his hips hurt. I don't want that feeling. So I'm going to just put this one behind the thigh like this. Here's the foot. And then we're just going to work with it. Now, a lot of this anatomy, I'm, he, he goes in disguise when he's in town. He doesn't want people in town to know he's a knoll because obviously they would attack him on sight, right? So I'm not going to really put the whole hyena leg thing out in the open. But his overall anatomy is sort of strange, right? He's like got these really elongated arms. And, and here's the, the hand that has the helmet in it. Um, <laughs> I can get the cherry coke. Yeah, so here, here we have this sort of this is this relaxed hand on his helmet that's like on his side. Now the reason I did it without an arm is I wanted to just be able to lasso grab this hand, move it around until it feels like it's in the right spot. Like right about there, I think is where you, you know, you you put your helmet and you put the weight of it on your hip. Right, and here's his helmet. And of course it has ear holes in it and all that stuff, but we're not really going to get into all that. Because just sort of keeping it simpler. Now he does use um, an Ori Calcum longsword is what I, it was in the description. So it's this sort of strange brass-like metal that's light and flexible. That's like the technology for it has been lost. But I kind of want this, I don't know if dumpy is the word, but this almost like disheveled feel to this character. And so he's got the long sword like this. Like he's just he's just letting it rest on the ground. Okay, and there we have our basics. There's the basics of the character right there. 
So, you know, if this is distracting right here, which it should be, you know, that helmet is kind of behind the hip, not in front of it. That was kind of a weird line. So what I'll do is I'll start getting my silhouette filled in and especially filling it in in places where, you know, having lines is, is distracting me. I don't like to be distracted when I'm starting to capture the character. I like to sort of feel the emotions of the character. And if I'm seeing like weird lines that are confusing and strange, it like pulls me out of the emotion. So I'll just start filling in, not even necessarily to get progress, but just to be like, go away, distractions. Shoot, nobody likes you. You are unwanted and unloved. Oh. Okay, so the nose is gonna be somewhere like right here. And again, like if you're feeling that kind of Pikachu vibe, I, I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's weird. This this is gonna have some anatomy like that. And then we're gonna get into this kind of gray color here. I don't know why, maybe we'll change, but. And then what I'm looking for is those eye sockets. Those eye sockets are just crucial to me of how this character is gonna look. And, and now I'm just basically just sort of playing around to try to find his expression. So by find, what I mean is that I just don't know. I just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so when you don't know what you're doing, you can't just execute. You have to sort of search. And I think that can be one of the scarier parts uh, of doing these commissions and of doing character art in general is you kind of have to search out what it is you're doing. You have to find it hidden away inside the work. So there I'm just I'm sort of painting the nose by using negative space. And see like adapting adapting where that eye is. Now I'm just kind of working through the shapes a little bit. And I still don't think it's sort of like tough or sinister enough. So we'll, we'll get there. So then we're just going to fill in this neck. And then we're going to make sure to bring back some of those key tendons and, and shapes and structures in the neck, right? And like you really want those nice strong neck tendons. The sphenomastoid tendon as it's known. Which technically a a lupine or or is it lupine? A dog like or wolf like animal wouldn't really have <laughs> a big sphenomastoid tendon, but this is fantasy. Okay, now remember like you have that little thing too with a with a dog or wolf mouth is this sort of lip structure underneath the nose with the split. And there you're starting to see that expression take shape. Kangaroo humanoid. Yeah, I think a kangaroo is actually also a good reference point for what a knoll. Because remember, we're not just talking like a knoll, like a nasty enemy. This is a player character who's a knoll. So I think it's like it's just a little different. He's like one of the most advanced knolls you're going to run into, <laughs> right? Um, so let's try to get this expression. You gotta be careful because you can get like accidental smiles. It happens a lot with characters. Like I didn't mean for this guy to be smiling. It just sort of accidentally happens. Okay, and then I, I do need some of that sinister element there to get these eyes to pop. And I probably need a little bit of a glowing eye to get a real pop on these. Um, again, pop is sort of a, a cheesy, artsy word, um, which basically means like, you know, real high contrast or, or very easy to see. See that accidental smile? See how that started happening? Okay, so like, I'm not sure what color I would do for the pop, but for the moment, let's just get like a really vivid yellow. That. 
So you guys see what pop means. It's like f from 10 feet away, you can still see these, these little really high contrast eye dots. And that's pop. All right. Okay, then also, um, and yeah, hey everybody, thanks for tuning in, by the way. Good to have everyone around once again for another morning of cartoons. We're just drawing, drawing the days away here. So just getting some teeth sketched in now. I think too we're gonna need some scars and some. This is a, a part of the description that I received was, you know, this this real uh, sort of wear and tear on this character. There's a lot of wear and tear on the character. He's been through some stuff. So you know, I really want this. This feeling of not only of sinister badassery, but of like wear and tear. There we go. I'm trying to get this um, this brow ridge correct. He doesn't really have a human head, so like a lot of your your standard sort of habits for doing a human head are gonna feel a little weird here because you have a snout and stuff. Like it's it's very different. The wrinkling is all different. Like. The bridge in the nose isn't vertical, it's horizontal and stuff like it. It's crazy. There we go. So now we're just going to get the far side of the nose a little darker. Again, just adding little nicks and cuts here. Getting some depth inside the ears. And there he's starting to take shape. And you can see I've sort of set a tone with my fur. I kind of have a two color, a two color thing going on with the fur. So let's add a third color. So I'm just gonna grab that one. And you know, slide up and go a little toward, you know, and there we go. Once again, you know, always working to keep those colors in a happy family together. And this one we're going to see a little more fur, so go 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 get your brush smaller. And let yourself do lots of strokes. So sort of a high side here, catching some light. Now you can see I have made one sort of dire error, which is that I'm lighting him from the top right and my son's on the other side. So I'm just going to grab my backdrop pop there you go and then I'm gonna move him over so he's kind of catching that light in the proper way something like that and that's about it now for another color to really sort of take it home I'm gonna grab this Sun color right here or maybe like this secondary Sun color and we're just gonna do this little rim light on him and rim light is a sort of an overused cheesy term, but really it just means a very strong highlight, but only on the edge of a shape, just just barely catching the edge. It's used a lot in like really good photography and stuff like that, and uh, you know, just a very tight little highlight on the edge of an object, and that's a rim light. Okay, so when you get that rim light color, you just catch it on catch it on a few of his shapes here. See that? Now let's go back into the teeth. Painting a little closer than I normally would now, just to make sure I get this face. You know, I want the face to really draw you in. Do you notice too? I, I, whenever possible, use my brush size to avoid doing lots of scribbling. I want my brush size to be such that when I hit a stroke, I don't need secondary strokes to get the amount of fill I want. I want the size to be there so I can do it in one stroke. And what that gives me is a lot of this sort of energetic look that I'm known for in my work. I'm just kind of like, jap, 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 slap, 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 paint, 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 you know. To me, really the, the most fun part of my work, honestly, is, is that sort of 
not quite, I don't know if I'll call it sloppy, but you know, like just almost like you're painting with a, a, a butter knife. <laughs> I'm painting with a butter knife. Okay, here. So now I'm going for a sort of a a betweener color for the neck. Okay, and then we're gonna get that fur highlight color. Do several sort of small strokes here. Then I'm gonna give him like a nice big head shadow. So often one of the darkest parts on a character will be the shadow cast onto the neck by the head. And there's just like right in there. See that it just darkens the neck. Put a few little bits in there and there we go. And again, you know, how did I know where to put that shadow? It's because my light is kind of doing this. So I go down and left from my face. Get a little bit of highlight on the snout here so it, it pops out like it should. Maybe even a little rim catch on those wrinkles. There we go. Now I definitely have an accidental smile. I don't want that. So I'm going to bend these sort of jowls down on him. There we go. See, th see how that accidental smile kind of disappeared? Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking good. <laughs> that's actually a little cooler than, than I was expecting. So that's a great feeling, you know. So many times things aren't as neat as you think they're going to be. So when they're a little cooler and they take on a life of their own, it's a real treat. Okay, so let's get some, some sense of furriness here. And you can also use your dark color to, to bite in some fur pieces. To shadow in here, to just do little little salt and peppery additions. And then of course he's got his whiskers and you know whiskers always come out of those sort of dark dots. Get a nice dark or, or very small brush and just do these few whiskers here. And if, the, if this knoll is kind of like my dog Coon, he doesn't have a lot of whiskers, just a few, but they're kind of like that. You know? <laughs> And then he's got one weird one that's like off the top of his eye, like for no reason. <laughs> okay, yeah, and the nose kind of looks like it's been beat up a few times or something. But I want a little bit of a highlight on the nose so it isn't just a black void. And so I'm going to do this kind of thing like that and just, just, just a tiny little deal. And then the nose can be moist sometimes. So I'm going to get a white. I'm just going to, that's it. Now, because the piece has so much yellow going on, the, the the eyes being yellow might not work out for me. So you can paint different color attempts, but before I do that, I think I'm just going to do this. And let's just like sort of experiment and see what might work. You know, like blue might work really good because it's gonna it's gonna jump out. See that? So like, let's go back out here, right, and see our piece as it really is. You see that? that? That cyan color just catches your eye from a distance. Just like, ooh, because there's very little blue in this piece. So I did that with a lasso, so it's a bit corny, right? It's kind of like, so what I'm going to do is just take my dark and just do a little root of repair here. There we go. So see that little color? It's tiny. But since there's so little blue, it's just going to grab your eye. And that's what we want. Okay, so now we need to... Um, by the way, hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Nice to have you. Okay, so now um, we need to get into a lot of gear and stuff. I think we've got the base expression is feeling like, yeah, I can get behind this character. I kind of want to be this character. 
I want to be in this world. This is kind of interesting. He definitely has some some moral ambiguity going with his character. You know, like, is this a villain or what? But, you know, in a Dark Sun type world, you never get clear answers to those types of questions. Okay, now just sort of working in some of the sword arm, adding some variability on some of these surfaces. And I'm just going to start filling his, his body shapes in. Not worried about where I drew the sword before because I'll get back to it. Really, just like I said before, I want to get rid of distraction right now. By sort of getting these shapes blocked in. And then I, I, I do like my drawing that I did for this hand and the helmet. And so I don't want to lose that and figure it out again. So before I get crazy, here's a little trick. And you guys have seen me do this before. I'm going to do a layer underneath. I'm going to get a a gray that has a tiny bit of yellow in it, almost like a French gray is what it's called usually. And look, I'm painting underneath. And this just saves me time so that I don't have to find that shape again. And then I just merge down. And now I'm flat again. But it just gives me that real quick way to keep my work from before. And you guys know me, a lot of times I'll just sort of bash right through and, and go over my work. But um, if I like what I've done, then sometimes I'll do that trick to preserve what I've done already. So this bassinet helmet, they have these like pointy sort of lower face cones on them. And they're originally, they're designed that way to deflect a lance. But in this case, he has to wear that type of helmet because he has a snout, because he's a, he's a knoll. And so what we want to give him is this sort of snouty helmet. Um, they're also known as like a pig face bassinet, which really, God, that, the, the term pig face is just so ugh, hard to deal with. So it's going to be like a cone. And, and how does this structure work? Here's where I'm a little bit out of my depth. <laughs> like which way is the helmet facing? I, I don't like what I did so far. That's not cool. So let's just back up. There we go. You guys don't see me do that too often. All right. So here we go. And then I think it's actually sort of pointing toward the camera, which is going to make it a little harder to sell that it has this sort of snout. But it just feels right. Like that. So we'll, we'll sell the snout with the shading and stuff. See, like, there's the, the sort of the snout on the helm. And it's behind his hip right here. Here's like a belt or something. Here's like his main frontal belt. Like that. Um, whose commission is this? Um, yeah, he may be watching right now. Uh, Steven Oztak, I believe is his name. And got to thank him. Thanks for the work. Thanks for the opportunity to do this character. It's really different and interesting. And remember, uh, all the hero commissions that I do, uh, do wind up in the Heroes of the Hammer books. So see, it's almost like this, this Optimus Prime type look. But instead of doing like lines that define this snout, Got like these eye bars, so you can't poke him in the eye when he's wearing this thing. I'm gonna use shading to do it. And these don't quite sell the snout either. So it's like I really have to take care here to get this snout to sell. So let's get a darker gray. And you know, cell is just another sort of cheesy sort of art term. Cell mean it's a lot like pop or you know, get it to read is another way to say it. So that just at a glance, you're getting the message that I'm wanting to sell you as the artist. You're, you're seeing what it is I'm leading you to see. So that's what you would call cell. So you see what I'm trying to do is like, get you to see that this is a cone pointing toward the camera and that is proving to be quite challenging because <laughs> see it doesn't look like it it looks like just some helmet blob so let's kill this and you know sometimes you just gotta struggle with this stuff so 
what if he is holding it sideways like so? See, easier to sell that way. Easier to sort of convince you of what, what I'm wanting you to see in the, in the piece. There we go. That's better. I like that better. So now I need to kind of do a little bit of work to portray where the eye slit is and exactly how this helmet works. Like it's got a swing joint on it, right? And the swing joint is kind of here. And that's where the, the piece swings up. But I believe that the snout piece is the part that's separate like this. Like that. See what, I'm, see what I'm trying to get at here is I'm trying to make you as the viewer quickly be able to understand this kind of somewhat odd concept. You know, not everybody is terribly familiar with these types of helmets. They're kind of odd looking. But when you're doing commission work and you get your description, you know, it's, it's not up for negotiation. You need to find a way to sell these concepts because people are really attached to their characters, you know, normal stuff. Normal stuff. Normal stuff here. Okay. So here's this highlight on the snout. And then I'm just going to do some vent holes because they almost always have these three vent holes on the design. And then there's the top of the snout. Like that. And then each hole has a little bit of a lip on the bottom side where the light catches it. And now I'm starting to starting to catch that strange helmet design. So also gotta sell this this the eye visor portion of the helmet needs to be clear like so <coughs> then the hip occ <coughs> occludes right there excuse me excuse me I breathe coffee down wrong tube excuse me Squeezy. Okay. All right, there we go. There we go. That helmet's finally sort of taking shape there. And then we have a few little decorative pieces. Yeah. Shh. If you guys can believe it, Cooper actually gets jealous when I talk to to you guys on the live streams. Those are those sounds you're hearing in the background. He actually gets like, I wish you'd pay attention to me instead of the internet. Ooh, I'm so sad. So exactly how to do this hand is a bit of a mystery. This is a challenging character, I gotta say. This is tough. Good grief. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> So I think I'm just you're just gonna see some fingertips, just like that. That's it. The rest of it's gonna be all gear. So there's like these sort of gauntlet straps here. And then we'll get the gauntlet straps over here as well. So we're not gonna see a lot of furry forearms or something. He's gonna have these kind of bracer straps. Kind of have his sort of scavenger's poncho thing going on here. Probably bring in the uh, the waistband a little bit. He's a little little Tuberton in the middle there. A little bit Tuberton. Francis Tuberton. Stars. Opposite Bonnie Croat. In a grip the knoll production. of a bassinet film. <laughs> okay, so here we go, here we go. Get that like solidified. I just have this, I don't know what this line's doing. The thing's just having his own little party. He doesn't fit into anything. Okay, there we go. Coffee tubes. Okay, so this sort of scavenger's poncho thing, I, I'm kind of digging. I think I'm going to... It accented a little more so it's kind of bigger like that. Get these thighs to 
join together. So now I'm back out here at this sort of full view. And let's just kind of round out some of the fill in. The old round and ground. Let's just round him and ground him. It's what we call the old round and ground. <laughs> Alright. Um, same thing too. I don't think he's like, you know, got overly exposed um, sort of anatomical bits like claws and paws and things like that. He's got some kind of boots and gaiters on. Boots and gaiters and boots and gaiters and boots and gaiters and boots and gaiters. Oh yeah, boots and gaiters, boots and gaiters, boots and gaiters. Boots and gaiters. Uh, I feel like my, my waistband is a little low, so we need to pull it up. So what you do is you just push that line right there. There we go. That's much better. That's a mucho better. That's a mucho better. And then um, we'll go over here. A little bit of shadow. A little bit of a shadow on ye old helm. And then the uh, the chin strap on the helm. I just feel like it, I need a fun little shape here. It's going to be sort of hanging out, and then it's also going to be hanging out here lower, and so it's time to make some decisions on leather. So, you know, anytime you're doing a character with lots of gear, you're going to wind up doing like leather belts and stuff. And there always comes a moment when you do the first one, and you kind of need to pick the color scheme for it. So, here we go. I'm trying to get a dark version of the color. In case you're wondering what the heck I'm doing. And then I want to get a highlight color. There we go. So at least just gives me a little sense of like, um, you know, wet, something that's on the helmet besides just a little pumpkin. <laughs> Instead of a face pumpkin. Hey, what in the heck is that? Is that a face pumpkin? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's easy answer. Yes, it is. And there we go, there we go. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. Okay. No, there's not going to be plate here. Um, this is actually like he has cobbled together armor that's actually been corroded and is like hide and cloth and a poncho and it kind of... Remember, this is like a Dark Sun style world, so plate armor is not something you're going to be seeing a lot of. Especially like in a complete set. This is a this is a brutalized world. These guys have like lost a lot of their gear to corrosion, to uh, rust eaters and stuff like this. Okay. Good. So, pardon my. My long pensive silence is there, but this this is not an easy character. This is really outside the norm. Now, the the shapes involved, you, you guys probably recognize from some of my other work, right? Like the kind of the I do these very sort of relaxed poses. I don't do a lot of like dancing and jumping and flying type poses. Um, but I think the fact that this is not only an inhuman character, but also kind of whoa, it it's giving me a little bit of pause on how to make sure I, st I still capture the idea. I don't want to lose these slumpy shoulders because I think they're key to the non-human um, anatomy. So I'm going to pull that shoulder down and get him into a very asymmetrical look. So an uh, more big pieces of leather, right? So I'm going to do the, the sort of the key piece of his poncho, which is right here. And just sort of playing with this this color that I've already established, right? And then we'll go ahead and keep this piece as an add-on piece, so it's on top of his his poncho with another belt here, and the belt reaches the edge of the body there, and there's another one there going across, maybe down there, yeah, like that. And then there we'll use our different color 
and we'll get this feeling of a belt going across. See that? And then another one here, another one here. This comes back. We go back to our metal colors, which we have down here. We go like that. So see, he has this very like improvised, repaired look. But yeah, I gotta say, this is this is not an easy character. This fool crazy. All right, there we go. And then let's just do some some little rivets and bolts and things to kind of send it home. Send. It. Okay. And I hope you guys are having a good time. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Nice to have you. Yeah, Alex, um, Dark Sun is a desert world um, from AD&D &D, uh, where there are no gods and magic is sort of um, very, uh, it defiles the world each time magic is used and so you have this ravaged world that's sort of been drink, uh, like supped dry and it's a, it's a wasteland world and it does have some Mad Maxi feeling stuff to it. Not as far as technology goes, but as far as like desperation, scavenging, wastelands, desert environments, you know, very few resources and so on and so forth. Okay, so now there's going to be some sort of, I don't know if I'd call them wrinkles, but you know, like, you know, pulls in his, in his poncho like that. I don't really like that one for some reason, so I'm just going to sort of cut that one off at the pass <laughs> and that's going to end there and then we'll show a little bit of his fur you know where we can but we're not going to show a ton of it remember he goes in disguise when he goes into towns and stuff so that's why he has the that very specific helmet as part of the description so now going back to the sword a little bit revisiting the sword these fingers need some highlights so they begin to pop out. There we go. So now you kind of catch those a little better. Wow, yeah, he's really cool. Definitely has the helmet like resting on the hip, you know, to give it that weight that it needs. Hey, Zazad. Thanks, man. Zazadich. All right, so we're gonna get a little more into the gear, um, but I want a little different highlight color so it doesn't blend with these other straps, and there it is. And I kinda wanna add something interesting to the gear too, like maybe he's got a sort of another um, type. Like I think they, they Part of the backstory is that they killed a bullet and harvested some of the pieces and maybe some of the guts. And I know that bullets are generally portrayed as sort of like, you know, grayish. But I just feel this character really needs some very subdued drab green. It's just sort of needed. And so I'm going to get a very dark green here. And then I'm just going to do some abstraction in the background like that. You see that? Like, And what I mean by abstraction is just like like suggested stuff. I'm not even really gonna reveal to you what it is I'm, I'm doing. I'm just suggesting some shapes back here. I'm suggesting some belts and some pants and so on. Belts and pants and belts and pants. Okay, so here's the main belt, the main waistband. And then I kind of want the poncho to come all the way down here. It kind of comes off the edge like that. In fact, I think it goes all the way down here. Yeah, like there. Almost like a butcher's apron. Belts, pants, belts, and pants. Okay, so it's like. We'll, we'll belt him up so he has, like, you know, stuff going on here. Maybe he's got a pouch right here. Good old belt pouches. You gotta love them. A staple of fantasy. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so we're sitting at 45 minutes right now. This definitely is not going to be a one hour <clears throat> commission. I'll tell you that much, it's just too challenging. It's taken me some time. Nothing standard about this one, I tell you. So here's the, the quillins on the long sword. Those big sort of like claymore style quillins. Kind of put a little diamond at the tip or, or almost like an arrow shape. Now I don't want his poncho to become so monochrome that it's sort of boring. And so I'm going to put like it actually has like a pattern in it. So I'm just drawing sort of somewhat arbitrary shapes with my lasso here. Just like that. Then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to darken, I'm going to saturate and darken these parts like this. And you see it gives it like there's a print on his, on his poncho. Really simple step. Then you can go back to your good old trusty paintbrush and you have those colors available. And you can kind of do some little repairs and little fix ups and make it a little more interesting. Just like that. Okay. Now let's get a highlight for this pouch and uh, by proxy, a sort of a, a leather highlight that we can use. In general, I don't know if proxy is the right word there. What does proxy even freaking mean? I don't know. So hey, you guys, if anybody can make it to Rincon in Tucson at the end of September, I'm running some games. There's a few open slots left. I would love to have you guys in one of my games. Going to be running Doom Vault right out of the ICRPG core. Going to be running Blood and Snow. Actually, it's Blood and Snow's premiere out in the world. So if you can catch up with me, that would be really cool. Really got to send a huge shout out to the organizers of Rincon in Tucson. It's really got a great, highly organized feel to it. Great scheduling tool, which I really think Gen Con needs. I, this ticket system with Gen Con is just impossible. I can't stand it. They need a digital scheduling tool so you can find conflicts. You can shop events by GM. You can do all kinds of cool stuff that the Gen Con how to figure things out sort of feel is I don't think is very good. I know that the scale is an order of magnitude crazier than anything else but I'm still grumpy. <laughs> I'm grumpy because I want to play more games. Okay, cool. Alright. So I'm kind of just hanging out now. Hope you guys are feeling this piece. The, the helmet to me just feels like too bright. So I'm going to take a good section of it here, like this much of it, including the back chin strap. And I'm just going to bring it down. Just like that. I just feel it needs to be in shadow a lot more. And you know, a lot of times I paint color, but you know, there's nothing wrong with using your lasso too. You know, feel free. Okay, now he's got these green gloves. I like this green color. He's gonna have green gauntlets. So let's start working on them. Okay, just like that. Just keeping things like real simple and blocky here. Just like that. Get a far smaller brush and do some of these little cross pieces and then get your green go up make it more green like there and here's our highlight green and then just to get it to pop let's go up and go more yellow up 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 and get this kind of rim color like that see that up, 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 and then we just get that to pop just a little bit like so. Now I think we're going to see some fur in here. Just using the colors we've developed on doing the face. 
just real simple just kind of just like that it's where you can see his arm actually like under the under his gear go back to your leather color and the reason I, I, I do single leather colors in a lot of my pieces is I feel that it, it unifies it it shows you know that this is all made out of somewhat similar material okay then I want to get belt loops on this main belt and I also want to switch its color it's just blending in too much so check this out because talking about the unified leather color actually made me notice ooh it's a little too unified in this case so I'm gonna go like this go like this a little red there that could be nice then I'm gonna go in and since I just used a lasso I get some chunky shenanigans I'm gonna fix those shenanigans then get the brighter piece and pow 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 and now like that that belt has some life um, but you know I don't think the loops should match the material so let's just go back I'm gonna get this poncho color and the poncho is actually forming the belt loops and now I want a, a poppy highlight for poncho there we go almost this like taupe or beige color and then he has this red belt underneath and then now that I have that red established I can bring it into the piece in a few other places just like this these are just little tidbits of that cloth cool stuff down here uh, I'm gonna grab this uh, pauldron just give it some some detailing just like that there we go then you can also take the dark color and follow in where the light color is going and you get this feeling of a sort of a pressed in seam see how that worked there we go Alrighty, alrighty, you looking good, looking good. Real hyped for Blood and Snow. Hey, thanks, Arnolf. I'm really, really excited about it. It is a very challenging book, I gotta say. Not easy to write this. I could see how a lot of people could stall trying to write their Ice Age world. It's, it's very challenging, and I'm doing it with zero magic. It's an absolutely magic-free setting. So you don't want magic free to accidentally add up to boring, right? So that, that's where a lot of the, the challenges come into play. And uh, it's been really fun. I think it's going to be really neat. I, I think a lot of the stuff coming up I'm really excited about. Um, this year has been a real roller coaster ride. I mean, just life-wise, but also as far as projects, because I have tried and I wouldn't say given up on but tried and and stalled or shelved a lot of projects this year so there do you see how I just like push the quillins across the top of the hand that's a good way to make it to really sell this idea of the hand you know being under the quillins and really holding the sword in a realistic way I'll put these little these little blade loops on here there we go And I'm kind of getting ready to think about doing the sword. Wow. He's crazy, man. Crazy. Nasty bugger. Now, there's something missing in the coloration of the poncho. And so sometimes, if I'm feeling that, I'll try this technique, right? Remember, I sometimes will just use overlay and try this. And there it's kind of showing me the way. and that's going to be too much and this is probably just about right there we go it's just like I just need this roundness on the front of the body like that now to sort of compensate or in some ways in my mind repair that I need to go back in with a paintbrush because the gradients just look strange to me they don't look painted well because they're not but I need to go in and repair them. It's just like a thing of mine. There we go. So see, you just I'm using that gradient technique only to find colors, but then using my brush to do the actual work. And that keeps my work from getting, you know, too digital looking or something like 
keeps it brushy looking, I guess. And that's something that's important to me. So going back and just repairing some of the stuff. There we go. And, you know, any excuse to kind of get back in and, and fuggle with things uh, I like because it's just going to add strokes. And the more little strokes that you feel in there, the more, you know, you can imply or imagine the reality of things. Okay, there we go. So let's get into the sword. Let's get into the sword. Probably uh, caught quite late in the stream, huh? Um, I don't know. Been going, yeah, been going almost an hour now. Quite late. It's quite late, old chap. He's got some kind of cool buckles over here on his. There we go. I don't know what they are. I don't care. They just, there needs to be color over there, so I put color in. There you go. All right. Um, let's think about the sword a little bit. We're running out of time. It is described in, in my uh, commission as an orichalcum sword. So it's like this brass-like material. So let's get a color that's going to live up to that. So it's going to be um, an ochre type color. But if I get too ochre like that, it looks see-through, right? Because the background is that color. So we're just going to have to go more toward a copper. Say right there. Okay, and it's still going to be a little bit of a, a tangle with the background like that. So let's get that color and just really crank up the fun on it up to there. Is that going to work? Yes, that's going to work. How do I know? I don't. It's just I don't want to try things like a million times and ruin my enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. Now, just to make sure I get this blade nice and straight, I'm going to cheat. Use this straight straight edge tool. And we'll go back and do some brushwork on it. But yeah, there we go. Oh man, Knoxville, Tennessee. Hunter Barnhart. What's up, dude? A stalwart shield dwarf hunter. Been here since the beginning. Always showing up with the Support for the Runehamerians. So what the hell am I doing, you're wondering? I'm trying to get this line that defines the center of the blade, and I just want to do it with a with a hand stroke, and I want it to be done right. Come on. Is that it? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, boink, boink. Just getting that base of the blade figured out. Now the fun part. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to slam this highlight. And I think I'm going to have to change some of the colors in my backdrop because I just have too much in common here between my sword color and my backdrop color. And to me, the backdrop is not the hero. So it's the one that has to change. So I'm just going to go here. I'm just going to go Control B on this bugger. I'm just bringing in a little bit of navy. And then we're going to pull down some of the saturation, just like that. You see, so he sort of leaps forward. See, you feel that. And then the sword kind of gets this kind of weird, you know, crazy emphasis. And then I also want to do like a red hilt. Like it's sort of threaded with this red stuff here. Um, get myself a highlight color here. Those colors kind of get to share the stage. Far over the misty mountains go. Through dungeons deep and caverns low, we must away at break of day. 
to find our long forgotten gold. The pines were roaring. Okay, cool. So there's the Ori Calcum sword. I don't think I'm going to bother with a lot of detail in the feet. I just don't think it's going to add that much. Um, I think the fur in the arm here needs some detail. So I'm just going to do some little, little whiskery bits. Hey, Grustamar, I've learned so much from this channel, I feel I need to buy you a beer. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that, man. Here's to you. Okay, and then next up, I'd like to sort of get this base color, a little bit bigger brush, and I'm just going to, what is this stuff? C-I-T-A, baby. C-I-T-A. Is that J.J. Abrams or James Cameron that does C-I-T-A? I'm not sure. I think it's James Cameron. CITA is this kind of flippant attitude that James Cameron has about how to make movies look cool. And CITA is an acronym that means crap in the air. <laughs> okay. Um, it needs to be lower. I noticed the handle. Is the handle off center? Sure is. I'm just a mortal man. And yeah, it's a really long handle. This is like a three handed sort of grip on the sword and I like that I like it that way. I like it that way. There we go. Good eye. Okay. Still off a little bit, huh? Yeah you guys don't you don't ever have to feel shy about saying hey there's something that, that doesn't look off that looks off. It's weird. We're all friends here. I'm, I don't take any offense to to help. Why would I do that? Artists that do that stuff make me crazy. There we go. They make me crazy. Look how long that guy's arm is, man. That guy's got a got a big old long ass arm. I'm gonna get on that big old sword grip. I'm gonna get a swing out of two hand. I'm gonna cut that old head off, man. I'll tell you what. All right. Here we go. There we go. Very cool. Very cool character. I'm digging it. The pines were mooning on my butt. <laughs> now there's a spot on this Ori Calcum sword where there's just the highlight has just reached the limit. Like that. Okay. Um, now we're gonna get in and do a little more of this rim light. Grab it from up there. This is where the sun is just catching certain surfaces of his body just ever so. On the high, the winds were mornings in the night. Okay, so I want to give him a little bit extra gear before I call this good. And um, you know, maybe this will be a little, just a, a like a 90 minute commission. Always love to save my clients money. I mean, do I want like maximum revenue from my projects? Of course. I mean, I do this for a living, but saving people cash is crucial because they're nice enough to even give me the work, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like uh, passion for drawing if you guys follow him on patreon he he's always talking about you know like good quality artwork for RPGs should be affordable for everybody so these are like other swords and equipment that he has maybe spears maybe fishing pole whatever I'll let the uh, let the player have fun with explaining what this stuff may be um, The morning in the night, and the fire was red. It flaming spreadily. Them trees was like them torches. Them fools blazing with light. <laughs> oh man! A little thicker with the red of the sword handle to make the color contrast pop. 
Oh man, I'm not sure what you mean, but I, I will uh, get a little deeper on the bottom here. There we go. The winds were moaning in the night. Oh, la 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 la, the fire was red. I got a little straight line here that I don't like. There we go. I think it needs to sit just over a little bit, like so. Let's get these eyes to pop some more. Now that we have all these other colors competing for attention, it's getting close. Dang, that is an imposing close up. Holy crap. <laughs> Dude, ease up on your attitude, bro, Cephas. Namaste. Name. Dang. Okay, so I'm just going for some more contrast here to really get this cyan to pop out. Look at that side. But boosh! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Then I'm going to get absolute black. And that's how deep those eye sockets get in there. There we go. Get that black. Get these eye sockets just deeper and deeper and deeper. And then now that we brought that sort of true black in, we give a try at doing it for the nose. Give the nose some more solidity. But that's it. It doesn't, doesn't get to be in like a ton of places. Because it can really get infectious. So here I'm going to do a blend to get a little bit darker color on the neck shadow or head shadow. And that's it. And then see how it gets infectious though? You want to start adding it here and there to get the true darkness. And then before you know it, you got black all over the place, and then that's not cool. So just really trying to control it here. You guys can tell me if I'm succeeding or not. <laughs> okay, cool. There we go. Oh, man. What a badass. Look at this dude. What a total badass. Now, let's just play a little bit with some tonality before we walk away here. Oh, I'm so yellow. Oh, I'm so blue. Okay, so we're obviously not going to do those things. Oh, look at me, I'm green. Okay, we're not going to be dumb like that, but we might make a little bit more red up in that. A little bit more red. So one thing I'll do is I'll just do it in a, a change, and then I'll do this and try to decide if I like it. No, I had the colors on before. So I'm going to keep it like that, but now I'm going to see if I can get a bump. Just one more. <laughs> the bright spot on the front of the apron feels blobby. <laughs> you feel blobby. <laughs> okay, there. That's that gave some pop. Well, let's. We don't want to let uh, Talroth down, so let's let's clean this blob up. The winds were moaning. And I think by blobby, what you mean is uh, doesn't really the shape isn't serving a purpose. So there we go. Just have to clean those edges and get that to pop like that. And then we'll kind of do this to back ourselves up. It's too funny. The wind was moaning in my butt. The fire was red. His nose looks cut off with the pure black at the end. It flaming spread like there's just a hole there. Okay, so let's abort on the pure black nose. We'll go back to the base color like so. And then we'll take the pure black and we'll do like these little things. Just adding a little like detail inside of there especially where those nostrils are. The trees like torches blazed with light all over the misty mountain cold through dungeon deep 
Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's much better. That's much more better. Everybody having a good time up in this. So, hey, not bad, huh, guys? So that's one hour of work right there. And doing it live, you know? So there's really nowhere for me to hide on, um, you know, like how I get where I get. And you see, I did that whole hawk joint thing, like, and just hit it. I just hit it under his clothes. Um, and that's okay, you know, you don't need to, you know, see everything you paint. Sometimes you're just painting things so that the, the truth is there for starters. And then it can be hidden, and that, that's okay, man. That's okay. One little change I want to do real quick is I'm going to add some air or some atmosphere to these uh, weapons on his back so they look a little further behind him. And what I mean by air is actually the, the air actually colors objects that are a little further away. So you just bring up the sat and bring up the lightness by just a schmoogin. And then add a little yellow to it. And there we go. See, now they look like slightly behind him. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Neck protection, eh? Neck protection? Well, I really like showing the neck. So, um... But since I truly believe in this being collaborative with you guys, how about we just add to this pauldron? Like, it's got an, another articulated piece here. But I want it to have a different angle from its lower piece. Like that. Interesting. That's kind of cool. So it's a sword catch, right? So there's the inside of it. You got to be very gentle with that piece of drawing. There we go. Okay, now let's do the metal work. Is that kind of what you're thinking? The trees like torches. Those mofos blazed with light. It was crazy, dude. Far over. Yeah, I mean, I think this metal is what they salvage from, from the bullet. Who said it's metal? You know, this could be a, a chitinous, somewhat metallic, almost like almost like a shark plates or something. I don't know. It's just like, but remember, this isn't literal dark sun either. This is homebrew. And I don't know about you guys, but I know that um, Metal Gear is rare in Dark Sun, and there's not supposed to be dragons and all that stuff, but. My characters are heroes. If anybody has metal in a metal-free world, it's going to be the heroes. And yeah, they should be mugged. They should be mugged for it. Maybe get mean mugged. <laughs> there we go. So now he's got this sort of extra plate. And now it's got like, it's sort of bound on here. And then I'm going to bring my, my leather back in. Like that. Oh, that's pretty badass. That kind of adds a little different dimension to him. And you know what? I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. Spagadoosh. Spagadine. Spiggledy bebop. Spiggledy bean. Ow! Tight. Okay, so we do have a little bit of off-centeriness. So I'm going to just do 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 Repaired. Control S on that bugger. Pow! Then I'm going to grab a a uh, screen ca capture for Facebook and that is it guys thank you for tuning in to uh, cartoons and uh, the next show is gonna be what uh, it's Monday Wednesday Saturday right so Monday morning we're gonna be doing uh, we might be working on dead man's guide to dragon grin uh, might be working on doom vault prep for Rincon. so there's a lot of fun things to do um, and if you're in my any of my groups, don't watch my videos <laughs> because I'm about to start bringing my my group work into cartoons so that you guys can see exactly how I do prep and and what I do to get ready for games and 100% transparent and we can all get hopefully 
a little bit better at this. A little bit more better. All right. So doo -doo 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 -doo. this is Ingrid Bernal from the Mountains of Eardrum here in the Kinder Peaks signing off. Strength, honor, beer, and my eyebrows are right here. Okay. So uh, keep it real. And um, I'll catch you guys on the flippy canoe. All right. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. And have a great weekend. Remember, just uh, get out there and make the world a little bit more better than you, uh, a little bit more better than it used to be. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good to have all of you. See you next time. Far over them misty mountains cold. Them dungeons get deep. Them caverns get old. We got some way in a break of day to find a long pagodang. Go, whoa, 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 old. Huh.